the House of Representatives found itself grappling with two mighty questions on a Wednesday eve. First, they pondered whether to slap a censure on Rep. Rashida Tlaib of Michigan, a punishment that they've rarely doled out in the past few decades, albeit they've been known to flirt with the idea more often than they'd like to admit. The second conundrum was whether to expel Rep. George Santos from the great state of New York, his track record marred by pre-election falsehoods and post-election federal indictments. In both of these predicaments, the House chose not to administer the proffered chastisement. Instead, the beleaguered legislators found themselves rescued, in part, by support from their colleagues across the aisle. The earnest efforts anchored at the chamber's far extremes were thwarted, proving that in these matters, unity prevailed. The censure against Tlaib was set in motion by the fiery representative Marjorie Taylor Greene from Georgia. She not only aimed to disparage the Michigan representative, but also implied that Tlaib's participation in a recent Jewish-led protest on Capitol Hill, calling for a ceasefire in the Israel-Gaza war, was akin to an insurrection attempt. This, however, seemed less about branding Tlaib as a traitor and more about diminishing the weight of the term insurrection, consistent with Green's inclination to downplay the events of January 6, 2021. Yet, this time around, her rhetoric went too far. Green's fellow Republican and frequent ideological comrade, Rep. Chip Roy of Texas, opposed the motion, mainly due to its use of the term insurrection. Their tensions flared dramatically on social media, with Green even going so far as to tweet, oh shut up Colonel Sanders. In the end, Roy joined 22 other Republicans in voting to table the censure motion, effectively blocking its consideration. With 199 Democrats also supporting this move, the censure was shelved. If we envision the House on a grid, with the most liberal members at the bottom and the staunchest conservatives at the top, while those from districts that favored Joe Biden in 2020 occupy the left side, and Trump loyalists take their place on the right, we can discern who stood by Tlaib in the vote. The Republicans' support was dispersed throughout the caucus, although those from Trump-friendly districts three years prior generally leaned toward advancing the censure resolution. Following the Tlaib vote came the Santos matter, presenting a steeper threshold for approval with a requisite two-thirds majority and higher stakes should it pass. Here, the opposition was more widespread. A whopping 31 Democrats abstained from voting to expel Santos, while 15 others opted to vote present. In contrast, a considerable number of Republicans cast their ballots to eject him, a total of 24. There was one lone Republican who voted both to table the Tlaib censure motion and to bid Santos adieu, Rep. Max L. Miller of Ohio. Remarkably, the groupings of each voting choice overlapped. If we eliminate the individual lawmakers from the equation, we observe that the votes for expulsion, votes against it, and those voting present were distributed fairly evenly throughout the House membership, forming three distinct layers of voting. The votes against expulsion tended to skew toward the more conservative, Trump-friendly end of the spectrum, whereas the votes for expulsion leaned towards the more liberal, Biden-supportive end. This contrasted starkly with the Tlaib vote, which, once you remove the specific members, appeared to be largely partisan, except for the two dozen Republicans who supported tabling the motion. Interestingly, there wasn't a significant ideological divide among Republicans who backed or opposed tabling the Tlaib censure motion. However, Republicans who voted for Santos's expulsion tended to be newer to the House, less conservative, and hailed from districts that were less supportive of Trump in 2020, with many having won their elections in 2022. In other words, those feckless Republicans, as Green put it, who resisted her efforts to censure Tlaib were, in essence, more aligned with her political stance than those who chose to boot Santos. In the end, both votes, to the astonishment of many, could be described as genuinely bipartisan, a rare sight in the House in recent times.